What you're looking at isn't just another airplane. This is the COMAC C-939, China's boldest move yet in aviation, and it has the potential to completely change the balance of power in the skies for over 50 years. When people talked about commercial airplanes, two names dominated, Boeing and Airbus. These companies didn't just build planes, they shaped how the entire world travels. But now, with the full backing of the world's second largest economy, China is stepping in with an aircraft designed to directly challenge them. Right now, in design centers across China, a quiet revolution is unfolding. It's not happening with protests or weapons, it's happening with CAD software, engineering blueprints, and relentless ambition. China isn't simply building airplanes. They're constructing an entire aviation industry from the ground up, one that's meant to end America and Europe's monopoly on global air travel. And here's the kicker. They're doing it faster than most experts ever thought possible. Dot. So the question isn't it Chinese. Aircraft will reshape the future of aviation. It's when. And just as important, how will Boeing and Airbus respond when they do? To really understand what's at stake, let's put the numbers in perspective. By the year 2040, airlines around the world will need more than 39,000 new aircraft, a market worth over $6 trillion. Until now, that's been a two-way fight between Boeing and Airbus, with smaller manufacturers like Embraer, ATR, and Bombardier now Airbus. Canada playing in specialized or regional markets, but China has watched this Boeing Airbus duopoly from the sidelines long enough. With domestic air travel booming and expected to overtake the United States as the world's largest aviation market by 2043, the stakes couldn't be higher. Backed by 1.44 billion citizens and over 200 million middle income families, China doesn't just see airplanes as an economic opportunity. They see them as a matter of national security. Think about it. In a world where trade wars and sanctions can appear overnight, relying on American or European planes is a vulnerability China simply cannot accept. One geopolitical dispute could ground their entire aviation industry. For Beijing, that's an existential risk. So they've launched what may be the most ambitious industrial project of the 21st century, a plan to create a full lineup of domestically designed and built commercial aircraft capable of competing head-to-head -head with the world's best. And what I'm about to show you will either fascinate or terrify Western aerospace executives. Let's start with what seems like the least glamorous aircraft in China's lineup, the C-909, formerly known as the ARJ-21. Now you might be asking, why care about a small regional jet that first flew way back in 2008? And honestly, that's a fair question. At first glance, it looks almost identical to the old McDonnell Douglas MD-80 series. And that's no accident. Back in the 1990s, McDonnell Douglas struck a partnership with China, transferring significant know-how before being swallowed by Boeing. China took careful notes and never forgot the lessons. Here's the key point. The C-909 was never meant to dazzle the world. It was designed to teach China how to build commercial aircraft. Think of it like a set of training wheels. Not groundbreaking, but absolutely essential for mastering the basics. The C-909 marked China's very first step into commercial aviation. Critics have dismissed it as outdated and inefficient, pointing out its reliance on older GE. CF-34 engines and modest capacity of just 78 to 97. Passengers with a range of 3,700 km, but focusing only on that, misses the bigger picture. Every one of the 150 C-909s delivered has been a stepping stone, giving Chinese engineers invaluable hands-on experience in everything from supply chain management to the certification process. That knowledge can't be bought. It can only be built dot today. Air China operates 34 of these jets, quietly building up operational expertise that feeds directly into more advanced projects. And it's not just staying inside China. Transnusa Airlines in Indonesia already flies three C-909s and is committed to a fleet of 30 aircraft. 
While Equatorial Congo Airlines has placed its own orders. No, these aren't blockbuster numbers, but symbolically, they're massive. They represent China's first steps onto the world stage of commercial aviation. And as you're about to see, they're only just warming up at the C-909 with China's trial run. The C-919 is where things get serious. Here's a stat that might surprise you. More. C-919s have already been ordered than the entire current fleet of British Airways. Over 1,000 orders and commitments have been logged most from Chinese airlines for now. But the global implications are clear. The C-919 is a direct strike at the heart of Western aviation taking aim at the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320, the backbone of short and medium haul travel worldwide, and the most profitable product lines for both manufacturers got first flown in 2017. And entering commercial service with China Eastern Airlines in 2023, the C919 carries 158 to 192 passengers with a range of about 5,550 kilometers. If those numbers sound familiar, they should. They're nearly identical to the 737. Max and A320 Neo Dot, but here's the crucial difference. Dot, while Boeing and Airbus priced their aircraft between $80 million and $130 million each, the C919 is rumored to be offered at steep discounts, a deliberate strategy to break into the global market. For carriers in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America, where profit margins are thin, price often matters far more than brand loyalty. Now, you might be wondering, isn't the C919 just a Western jet in a Chinese shell? And for now, that's partly true. The aircraft currently relies on CFM, LEAP-1C engines, the same family used by the 737, MAX and a 320neo, as well as avionics and systems from Honeywell, Collins Aerospace and other Western suppliers. But here's where China's long game becomes clear. COMAC isn't content to just assemble foreign parts. They're systematically developing domestic replacements for every critical component. Testing is already underway on the CJ1000, a high bypass turbofan, a Chinese design engine meant to eventually replace the LEAP1C. Each C919 delivered today not only builds market credibility, it buys time for China to bring its indigenous technologies online. And they're not stopping at a single model. COMAC is already working on an extended fuselage version of the C919, adding around 50 more seats that a high altitude variant, engineered specifically for operations on the Tibetan plateau, where thin air challenges Western designs. This isn't just about product diversification, it's about strategic positioning. By targeting niches and underserved segments, COMAC aims to carve out markets where Boeing and Airbus are weakest dot. Imagine the implications if this succeeds. For the first time since the jet age began, airlines would have a credible third option in the most profitable aircraft category. But the C919 is only the beginning. Now comes the real test, China's first wide-body project. Enter the C929. Picture yourself as the CEO of a major airline looking to replace aging 787s or A330s. For decades, your choices have been limited to Boeing or Airbus, with each offering its own family of twin-aisle jets. What would it take for you to trust a third manufacturer from China? That's exactly the question Comac hopes to answer with the C929 a twin-aisle. Long-haul aircraft designed to compete directly with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and the Airbus A350 with a planned capacity of 250 to 320 passengers and a range of up to 12,000 kilometers. The C929 is designed to link any major Chinese city with key global destinations. Beijing to New York, Shanghai to London, Guangzhou to Sydney, and that's just the beginning of China's wide-body ambitions. Later in this video, we'll explore the even bigger C-939, a heavyweight contender, aimed squarely at the Boeing 777X and Airbus's largest of 350 variants. But here's where things get complicated for China. 
If building a Kaolin a Pauling a Pali ails where things get complicated for China, regional jet was training wheels, and the C919 was China's market entry, and the C929 is its first serious test. Then the C939 is the M-O-O-N-S-H-O-T dot think about what this means. The Boeing 777X is the most advanced and powerful twin-engine jet ever built. It stretches the limits of composite manufacturing, aerodynamic design, and engine technology with its G9X power plants, the largest turbofans ever produced, each nearly as wide as the fuselage of a Boeing 737. Competing in this category isn't just about designing a big plane. It's about mastering the absolute pinnacle of aerospace engineering. And that's exactly what COMAC is now attempting with the C-939, a project that quietly entered preliminary design in mid 224 dot details are still emerging, but early reports suggest the C-939 will target 350 to 400 passengers in standard three-class layouts. Putting it head to head with the 777X and Airbus A350 to 1000 amperes, projected range of 13,000 to 14,000 kilometers. Enough for ultra long haul routes like Beijing to Los Angeles or Shanghai to Snow Palo. A heavy emphasis on domestic supply chains, with Chinese manufacturers tasked to develop everything from advanced composite fuselage sections to a new high-thrust turbofan engine too. Rival the GE9X and Rolls-Royce Trent XWB. Scale of this ambition is staggering. For China, success with the C939 isn't just about selling airplanes. It would mean demonstrating that the country can match or even surpass Western aerospace giants at the highest levels of performance and reliability. But here's the catch. The bigger the plane, the bigger the risks. Developing a wide body requires an order of magnitude more investment, testing, and international trust than a regional or narrow body jet. Comac will face massive hurdles in composite material mastery, scaling up to 50 to 60 percent. Composite structures like Boeing and Airbus. Next generation engines, creating or sourcing reliable power plants in the 100,000 pounds of thrust class, certification and perception, convincing not just regulators, but global airlines that a Chinese-built wide-body can deliver 20 years of safe, efficient, and economical service. And yet, if China pulls this off, the consequences are enormous. The global aviation industry has essentially been a duopoly for half a century. A successful C-939 would shatter that balance. Creating for the first time in modern history a triopoly in which Boeing and Airbus face a state-backed challenger with virtually unlimited resources. And this isn't some distant fantasy. Design work is already underway. The only question is, will the C-939 become a true rival or an expensive reminder how difficult it is to break into the top tier of aerospace? What we're witnessing isn't just about airlines. It's about geopolitics economics, and the balance of technological power. Aviation has always been more than moving passengers from point A to point B. It's about who controls the arteries of globalization. The Wright brothers proved powered flight was possible. Boeing and Airbus proved it could be scaled safely and profitably. Now, China wants to prove it can own the next chapter of aviation history. Consider the ripple effects. For Boeing and Airbus, this isn't just a new competitor. It's a state-backed aerospace juggernaut with nearly unlimited capital, political backing, and the world's largest domestic market to incubate its products. Boeing and Airbus have always fought each other, but now they may find themselves fighting for relevance. For airlines, Comac is a bargaining chip they've never had before. Even if they don't place orders, the ability to threaten a switch gives them leverage when negotiating prices delivery schedules, or maintenance contracts with Boeing and Airbus. For passengers, the benefits could be tangible. More competition could drive down fares, speed up innovation, and expand connectivity into underserved markets. But it also raises questions about trust and safety. 
How quickly will travelers accept flying 12 hours over open ocean in a jetliner made in Shanghai? And finally, for governments, this is strategic. The ability to manufacture and operate advanced aircraft is a pillar of national sovereignty. For China, breaking free from reliance on Western jets means insulating itself from sanctions, trade wars, and supply chain choke points. For the U.S. and Europe, it means defending one of their most critical high-tech industries from being outflanked. The bottom line? The duopoly is no longer guaranteed. By the 2030s, we could be living in a tripolar aviation world where Boeing, Airbus, and Comac compete for dominance in the skies. Whether Comac succeeds with the C-939 or stumbles under the weight of its ambition, one thing is certain. The global aviation industry will never be the same again. So, the next time you board a flight, look at the logo on the tail. For the past 50 years, it's almost always been Boeing or Airbus. But in the not so distant future, it just might say COMAC. It's about more than airplanes. It's about the shifting center of technological gravity in the 21st century. China's aviation push represents something profound. A nation of 1.44 billion people declaring that the defining technologies of modern civilization should not belong exclusively to the West. That they too can master the most complex engineering challenges humanity has ever created. Every C919 that rolls off the production line carries not just passengers but national ambition. Every successful flight of a COMAC aircraft is seen within China as proof that they belong at the table of advance. Technological nations. Dot. This is bigger than business. It's about who will define the future of global technology and infrastructure. And China has made it clear they intend to claim a seat at that table. The road ahead is anything but easy. Technical challenges, certification barriers, and geopolitical tensions. Will test COMAC's resolve. Building a competitive airliner is among the most difficult industrial undertakings on Earth. Boeing and Airbus have had decades to refine their expertise, supply chains, and safety cultures. Comac is attempting to compress that learning curve into a single generation, and yet the progress is undeniable. From the modest C909 to the ambitious C919. To the wide-body C929 and the conceptual C939, China is methodically assembling not just aircraft, but an entire aviation ecosystem designed to challenge Western dominance. The battle for the skies has begun, and while Boeing and Airbus still command massive advantages in experience, technology, and trust, China has something powerful on its side: patience. They don't need to win tomorrow. They're playing the long game where every small step builds toward a future in which Chinese aircraft will connect the world in ways we've never seen before. The aviation landscape, as we know it, is about to change forever.